Before we turn away from this problem to the next one, I just want to reiterate how to find that 0.1533. Um, like I said, you can use StatCrunch to find two com different pieces and then add them up, or you can use Excel to find the piece to the left, then the piece to the left of the right one, and then find the piece to the right, and then add them up. And again, with Excel, if you wanted, you could do it all at once. You don't have to do it individually. Oops. I don't know what it's doing there, but there we go. Okay, so we could say, okay, equals norm dot dist, uh, let's see, 165 comma uh, 180 comma 12 comma true plus parentheses 1 minus norm dot dist, another parentheses uh, let's see, 200 comma 180 comma 12 comma true. Close parentheses, close the other ones, which I suppose you don't really need those outer parentheses, but I just liked them there to make sense of it all. And there you go. So I mean, if you wanted, you could do it all at once. I don't think it's really that easy to do in Excel all at once. I think it's easier to find the component pieces and add them up. Just never, 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 never forget that norm dist finds left area only. So if you're going to use Excel, it's got to find the left area. See, both of these are left. These two, right? They're both left. And then you take the second one away from one to find the right, and then add up this one right here and this one right here, which I don't like doing that in yellow. So you added those two orange ones right there to find the final answer, which is right here. Okay? All right, we're done with that. Now let's do it again. <laughs> we're going to keep doing this over and over. You'll be drawing a lot of normal curves in your life. All right, so the GRE, um, the combined score on the verbal and quantitative reasoning, is normally distributed with a mean of 1066, standard deviation of 191. The GREs are basically the SATs, but for graduate students. So before you get into college, you want to take the SATs. Before you get into graduate school, you want to take the GREs. Okay? So this is a between probability. See that? So we're going to find the proportion that are between 800 and 1200. So let me go make a picture of that. Again, I'm making this in a program you don't have, so don't sweat it. Hold on one sec. Okay, there we go. So you can see it's got 1066 down the center. It's got 800 over on the left, 1200 on the right. Don't worry about the density. We don't care about that. Um, you can just draw a picture, and that's fine. So you draw a picture for yourself to give yourself a sense of what the heck is going on. And then you're going to have to use Excel or StatCrunch to find that probability. Now it's a between probability, so remember um, neither one of those programs does those too easily. You're going to have to to wrestle with them a little bit. Namely, you're going to have to use StatCrunch or Excel to find the area to the left of 800, and then again the area to the left of 1200, and then you're going to have to add them up, or excuse me, subtract them. All right, what am I talking about? Well, let's see here. So let's go to um, StatCrunch. And I'll just go, oops, well, it doesn't matter. I had it open another window, but I don't care. Right, I'm going to open StatCrunch. I'm going to go to Stat, Calculators normal. Okay, so my mean was 1066, my standard deviation is 191, and I want the area to the left of 800. There we go. So I'm going to snapshot that. It's a 7.2 example. Oh, let's see. I don't know what one it was. Fiddlesticks. Come here. Example 3A. There we go. Okay, example 3A, part 1, because we're going to have to do this twice, right? Export. Fine. And now I'm going to do it again, but with, I think, 1200 was the other number. Compute. There we go. Snapshot. 7.2, example 3A, part 2, export, cool. All right, now I can go to Excel and I can paste those in to kind of give myself a sense of what's going on, make it its own tab. 
7.3 example 7.2 sorry 7.2 example 3a all right let me zoom in a little bit there we are okay so let me go paste these suckers in let me go grab them remember to to grab them you go to my results there they are. Then you click on one and you copy it. Cool. And then you go paste it in. You can make it smaller, just kind of move your cursor up to the top left corner or top right corner and kind of double click and drag it down. If you have a mouse pad that's working, which I don't. <laughs> so everything's a little tougher for me. Oops, I don't like how small I made that. There we go. All right, let me go grab it again. Stack crunch. Go back to my results. I tried the back button, but I didn't like it before, so you never know what might like it this time. Copy. Okay. And it's giving you a little warning, giving me a little warning every time I do that. Um, just saying, in case it, it kind of gives you a warning, just accept, you know, say, yes, I'm okay with this site running stuff. You know, it's just your computer trying to make sure you're not downloading any bad stuff, which you know, stat stuff might be bad stuff, but you don't get to call it that for the sake of your computer. All right, cool. Now, how can we do it? So, well, we want the area between. So we want the probability that 800 is less than X, which is less than 1200, right? Okay, so with stat crunch, what we would do is we would take the two numbers we found, 0 0.758, um, 7585265, take away, 0 0.08185 right? You're taking the big one on the right and subtracting away the little one on the left, right? So if you take this big huge area and you cut off from 800 over, you're going to have the between portion left shaded, right? Now if you're doing it in Excel, which quite frankly is probably a little bit easier for this one, you want to find the area that x is less than 1200, which would be equal to norm dot dist let's say 1200 comma 1066 comma 191 comma true then you want to do it again for 800 right so you go in here 800 there you go notice that the same number stack crunch came up with so the area we were actually looking for is equal to 0.7585 minus 0 0.08 enter and there you go found it okay. if you don't need pictures and stuff then Excel might be a little bit quicker for this particular type for all the rest of them stack crunch is a little bit quicker I would say but they're kind of they're similar all right now let's go back oops better copy and paste because we want to have an answer in our document. So there you go. Now for your picture, because you want to keep, you know, as you do these problems, it always helps to kind of take out a sheet of scratch paper and draw a picture for yourself. So you can figure out, oh, okay, this was a between one I was doing that works this way, or this was a less than one that works this way. And of course, you might want to have like instructions for yourself. You know, if it's less than, do this. If it's greater than, do this, and so on. All right, now Columbia University in New York City requires a minimum of 1350. What proportion of GRA test takers will score high enough to enter Columbia? Columbia is very hoity-toity, as it were. Now this is one we can totally do in Stack Crunch. So let me go back here. I go back to my Stack Crunch. Stack Crunch. Stat. Calculators. Normal. Again, 1066. 191, whoopsie, 191, and it wants 1350, but I want a greater than, so I'm going to move this, click this little arrow here to pull the pull down menu, bring the pull down menu, and do a right, and then it computed it automatically. Take a snapshot. This is 7.2 example 3b. Export. I'll go back to my results. and paste. Oops, I better make it its own thing. 
7.2, example 3b. Awesome. All right, now how can we do this? So with StatCrunch, it just tells us, right, the probability, oops, probability that x is greater than 1350, oops, if I could type it, is equal to 0 0.0685196, okay? Now how would you find it with Excel? Well, if you type norm equals norm dist, uh, what was it? It's 1350 comma 1066 comma 191 comma true. You'll get the wrong thing. You basically, it's finding that white area because it always finds left area. So if we want the area we were actually looking for, x is greater than 1350, it's 1 minus that value. And of course, you could do it in one step. You could say 1 minus norm dist blah, 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 blah. That's another way to do it. There we go. I will copy and paste that in. Oops, hold on one sec. There we go, I copied and pasted it in. So if you wanted to the proportion if it, as a percentage, you could just say 6.85%. 6 so if they want it as a decimal, you can say 0 0.0685. All right, now what is the percentile rank of a student who earns a combined GRE of 1100? Now remember about percentiles. Percentile is the percentage that's lower than you. So what you're really looking for is the percentage of that of x less than 1100. So we're going to need another tab here. 7.2 example 3c. What I'm looking for is the probability that x is less than 100. Okay. So StatCrunch finds this one super easily. So I'm going to go to StatCrunch, data, oops, gosh, I always do that wrong, stat, come on, there we go, normal, all right, it was 1066, it was 191, and then we wanted, rats, I can't remember, what was it, 1100, there we go, 1100, 1100, and compute, and there you go. So that is what we want. Percent, percentile is the percentage below you, right? So that's what we were looking for. So this is 7.3, example 3C. Okay, export. All right, now if I go to my stat crunch, my results, there we go. Copy. Awesome. Let me go back to Excel and paste it in. So that way we have it. Oops, way too big. I'm not going to be able to see that. There we go. Okay. So how could I find it? Well, with StatCrunch, you can. We just did find it, right? StatCrunch. It's basically the probability that x is less than around 1100 was 0 0.5706. For that 4265, which rounds to the 57th percentile. Cool. You round because percentiles are rounded to the nearest whole number, so it was 57. It, you make it a percent, 57 percent, and that's 57th percentile. Now how could we do it with Excel? Well, Excel is actually just as easy, to be honest. It just doesn't draw a picture of it. So it's equal to norm dist, gosh, dot dist. And then you say um, 1100, comma, 1066, comma, 191, comma, true. Same number, which means, again, 1,000, or 1100, it's not 1,000. 1100 is the 57th percentile. There we go. I'll copy and paste that in right here. So the percentile rank really wants a percentile. So you have to tell it, you know, the 57th percentile or the 22nd percentile or whatever. And notice what I said at the bottom. Percentiles have to be rounded to the nearest whole number. All right, we're done with that. I'll see you next time for inverting the whole process. See you then.